Hello, my name is John Hadley. I am staff for the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council, and I will be uh, providing a presentation uh, that is a scoping overview for adding bullet and frigate mackerel as ecosystem component species in the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan. As a general outline of what I will be going over, I will provide a review of the scoping process. This will be followed by information on what the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council is considering and background information, input that the council is hoping to receive, how to provide your comments to the council, and then during webinar sessions, this will be followed by a question and answer session on the material that is covered, and finally an opportunity to provide public comment. Before getting to the details amendment, I'd like to review what is scoping. Scoping has two main purposes. One, to inform the fishing public that the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council may propose new regulations or change existing ones, and also to allow the opportunity for the fishing public to comment on the issue or identify other related issues that may need the council's attention. Initially, a management issue is identified. This is followed by scoping, where the public provides comments on ways to address the management need. The council reviews these comments and develops management actions and alternatives. This is followed by public hearings where the public provides comments on the management actions and alternatives that the council has developed. The council then reviews this input, modifies the actions and alternatives, selects their preferred alternatives, and then the amendment moves towards final approval. This is the last chance for public input at the, council, at the, at the final council meeting. And so we're fairly early in the process, as you can see the arrow there, by scoping. And scoping really is the first and best opportunity to make suggestions for the council to consider before an amendment is developed. The council is currently considering adding bullet mackerel and frigate mackerel at, as ecosystem component species to the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan. Below you'll see pic a picture of bullet mackerel on the bottom left and frigate mackerel on the bottom right. And these are common prey species for both dolphin and wahoo. The council is considering this action as an acknowledgement of the role that the two unmanaged mackerel species play as important prey for both dolphin and wahoo. The South Atlantic Fishery Management Council is currently soliciting input through scoping before deciding if it will move forward with any action. So all input received during the scoping process will be reviewed at the June 2019 South Atlantic Fishery Management Council meeting, and the council will determine whether to proceed with adding bullet and frigate mackerel as ecosystem component species in the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan. Next, we'll look at the regions that may be affected by this action. The Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan is fairly unique in that it covers the U.S. exclusive economic zone from Maine through the Florida Keys. So any change to this FMP has the potential to affect some fisheries in the EEZ along the entire East Coast. The uh, management jurisdiction of the Dolphin Wahoo FMP is fairly unique in that it spans multiple councils' jurisdictions. The South Atlantic Fishery Management Council serves as the lead fishery management council but manages in cooperation with the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council and the New England Fishery Management Council through seats on the South Atlantic's Dolphin Wahoo Committee. The initial request to consider bullet and frigate mackerel as ecosystem component species came in March 2018 when the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council requested that the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council consider managing the two mackerel species as ecosystem component species in the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan. Originally, the two mackerel species were considered for inclusion in the Mid-Atlantic Council's unmanaged forage omnibus amendment. However, this was these two species were disapproved by the National Marine Fisheries Service. At that time, the National Marine Fisheries Service cited concerns over consistency with National Standard 2, which deals with scientific information, and an insufficient connection to the Mid-Atlantic's managed fisheries. I'll now provide a little information on the distribution of bullet and frigate mackerel, as well as their connection to dolphin and wahoo. Bullet mackerel are commonly found from Cape Cod through the Gulf of Mexico, 
while frigate mackerel have a more compressed distribution and are typically found from North Carolina through Florida. Both of these mackerel species had been identified in the diets of dolphin and wahoo in the North Atlantic. Wahoo have shown a strong reliance on bullet, and bullet mackerel and frigate mackerel as forage, as these two species have been observed as the most dominant forage species by mass and number in wahoo diets. Dolphin tend to have a more diverse diet and a lower reliance on the two mackerel species, but bullet mackerel and frigate mackerel have been identified as important prey for dolphin at times. We'll now go over some information on fisheries for bullet and frigate mackerel. Commercial landings of bullet and frigate mackerel over the past 20 years were reported by dealers in the Mid-Atlantic and New England regions. All of these landings were reported as frigate mackerel. Bullet and frigate mackerel are similar in appearance, and it is possible that some landings of frigate, bullet mackerel may have mis been misidentified as frigate mackerel. Additionally, it is also possible that some landings of bullet mackerel were not captured at the species level by all trip ticket programs, with some landings of bullet mackerel being recorded in 2018 as a result of species codes being updated to allow reporting of bullet mackerel specifically rather than at a more aggregate level. Commercial landings have been variable but are typically relatively low. Over the time series examined, average landings per year were approximately 4,500 pounds. The average annual X vessel value was approximately $2,400, and the average X vessel price was 93 cents per pound. There were some years where landings greatly increased. Um, there were two notable years in the time series. In 1999, approximately 37,000 pounds of uh, frigate mackerel were reported, and in 2000, approximately 20,000 pounds of frigate mackerel were recorded. Land, however, landings in recent years have been typically low. Moving over to the recreational fishery, recreational landings of bullet and frigate mackerel have been variable and sporadic as well. Over the 20 year time period examined, approximately 4,700 pounds combined for both species have been landed on average annually. Uh, many years, however, record no landings. On the other hand, there are some years of exceptionally high landings, um, one, one of which occurred in 2012 when 52,000 pounds of bullet and frigate mackerel were recorded landing, landed recreationally, and in 2013 when approximately 18,000 pounds were recorded landed recreationally. Recreational catches of bullet and frigate mackerel have largely occurred in the South Atlantic region. However, in some years, some catches were reported from the Mid-Atlantic region as well. Next, we'll switch gears to look at some of the regulatory parameters for adding ecosystem component species to a fishery management plan. There is no mention of ecosystem component in the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act itself, so the basis for the concept presumably is derived from multiple references to ecosystem and authority for councils to conserve target and non-target species and habitats through fishery management plans. Um, ecosystem species are defined as stocks that a council or the secretary has determined do not require conservation and management, but desire to list in an FMP in order to achieve ecosystem management objectives. Specific ecosystem management objectives have not been fully developed in the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan, so if the council decides to move forward um, with pursuing the addition of ecosystem component species that are unmanaged prey for dolphin and wahoo, it may be helpful to specify ecosystem management objectives that these ecosystem component species may address. When examining whether a species qualifies as an ecosystem component species, the council must first determine whether that species or stock requires conservation and management. If it is determined that a species or stock does not require conservation and management, then that species has the potential to be listed as an ecosystem component and does not require an annual catch limit, other reference points, or accountability measures. And according to National Standard General Guidelines, a council should consider a list of factors when deciding whether additional stocks require conservation and management. This list of factors covers the importance of the stock to the marine environment, the economy, or multiple user groups, 
whether that stock is caught um, in a fishery or is a target of a fishery, whether a fishery management plan can help develop a fishery, resolve conflicts, improve the stock condition, or enhance the condition of a fishery, the economic condition of a fishery rather, and the extent to which the fishery is already managed. Next, we'll look at how a council can designate a species as an ecosystem component. Under the National Standards General Guidelines, councils may choose to identify stocks within their fishery management plans as ecosystem component species if a council determines that the stocks do not require conservation and management based on the considerations and factors that we just covered in the previous slide. Ecosystem component species may be identified at the species or stock level and may be grouped into complexes. Management measures may, can be adopted in order to, for example, collect data on ecosystem component species, minimize bycatch or bycatch mortality of ecosystem component species, protect the associated role of the species in the ecosystem, and or address other ecosystem issues. And that last part adds some flexibility in how a council can move forward. So based on the information available, it appears that frigate and bullet mackerel may have the potential to be listed as ecosystem component species for dolphin and wahoo. Um, in order to do so, the council and the Secretary of Commerce must agree that the species do not fit the requirements for implementing conservation and management measures, which were previously covered, and also if it is determined that the species are important in relation to the ecosystem management of dolphin or wahoo stocks. If the council were to add ecosystem component species to a fishery management plan, an amendment must first take place, and this is the mechanism for adding the unmanaged prey species as ecosystem components. Some councils, uh, such as the Pacific and Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, have designated ecosystem component species, species through a comprehensive amendment that added the species to multiple FMPs as one. So this is a, a comprehensive um, look that went through all of that council's um, fishery management plans. On the other hand, this is certainly not required and a council can add an ecosystem component species to a single FMP. Next, we'll transition into looking into how councils have designated unmanaged prey species as ecosystem components, so looking at different examples. We'll start off with the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council and their unmanaged forage omnibus amendment, which became effective September 27, 2017. This amendment comprehensively implemented management measures for 17 species and groups of species, with 16 of these being designated as ecosystem components in all of the Mid-Atlantic's fishery management plans. This amendment was intended to prevent development of new or expansion of existing directed commercial fisheries for ecosystem component species until adequate information can be gathered to assess the potential impacts. Before moving forward with this amendment, the Mid-Atlantic Council received input from their Science and Statistics Committee on how to narrow down important forage species before moving forward. The Mid-Atlantic's amendment established multiple different provisions. One was a possession limit of 1,700 pounds for all ecosystem species combined. There was also a permit requirement where commercial vessels and operators that catch and or possess ecosystem component species must be issued a commercial vessel and operator permit. Transit provisions that allow commercial vessels to transit the Mid-Atlantic's Forage spe Species Management Unit with an amount of ecosystem component species on board that exceed the possession limit for vessels that intend to land in a port outside of the management unit and provided that the fish were harvested outside of the management unit and all gear is stowed or, and not available for immediate use while transit. And finally, there is a, a record keeping and reporting requirement that requires vessels, vessel operators, and seafood dealers to report the catch and sale of all ecosystem component species on existing vessel trip reports and dealer reports. 
the Pacific Fishery Management Council developed their Comprehensive Ecosystem Base Amendment 1, or CEBA 1, which became effective May 4, 2016. This amendment comprehensively implemented management measures for multiple ecosystem component species in four of the Pacific Fishery Management Council's FinFish fishery management plans. This amendment was intended to prevent development of new directed fisheries on unmanaged species until adequate information can be gathered across to assess potential impacts. Additionally, the Pacific Fishery Management Council adopted Council Operating Procedure 24, which sets up a standard process to consider exempting fishing permit proposals for the designated ecosystem component species, and this is intended to develop scientific information that may lead to potential future directed fisheries. The Pacific Council's amendment implemented general measures and trawl gear specific measures. Under the general measures, there was a retention limit implemented, a, a trip limit implemented, an annual limit implemented, and a processing limitation. The processing limitation uh, was a prohibition with some exceptions of at-sea processing of ECs, ecosystem component species. As far as the trawl gear specific measures, there was a trip limit just for trawl gear um, per vessel of one metric ton combined weight of all EC species on board with the exception of ecosystem component squid species, as well as an annual limit um, four vessels where a vessel uh, had a limit of 40 metric tons combined weight of any ecosystem component squid species in any calendar year. Next we'll look at an example from the North Pacific Fishery Management Council where this council recently classified squids as ecosystem component species through amendments to their Bering Sea Aleutian Islands and Gulf of Alaska ground fish fishery management plans. These amendments became effective August 6, 2018. In their amendments, the North Pacific Fishery Management Council noted that squid are important prey species for marine mammals, fish, and other squid, and although squid do not require conservation and management, it is still appropriate to take measures to minimize squid bycatch to the extent practical. The North Pacific Amendment established a record-keeping and reporting requirement where catch, discard, and production of squid must be recorded in logbooks or on catch or production reports, and a retention limit where the maximum retainable amount of squid allowed is not to exceed 20% of the total landings retained. And finally, uh, we'll take a look at the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council. The South Atlantic Council has listed several ecosystem component species in the Snapper Grouper FMP, and these, uh, these species were not directly implemented due to concerns over the protection of prey species, unlike what the Council is looking at now with bullet mackerel and frigate mackerel. The species that were listed as ecosystem components in the snapper grouper FMP include longspine porgy, cottonwick, ocean triggerfish, bank sea bass, and black sea bass. There are no regulations associated with the ecosystem component species listing, but the species stay within the fishery management unit. Listing uh, these species as ecosystem components has prioritized them for continued data collection that may help with future ecosystem modeling and ecosystem-based fishery management efforts. So looking at some of the implications of listing unmanaged prey species as an ecosystem component, uh, these implications are highly variable and are dependent on the management measures that are put into place around the given ecosystem component species. Some of the benefits include recognizing the ecosystem role of the species as prey for species that a council directly manages. Um, this, this listing can provide protection for the species from unexpected ramp up and directed effort or landings. It allows for orderly growth directed fisheries if desired and can address bycatch concerns. Finally, listing um, a species as an ecosystem component can prioritize it at, um, as a species for research and monitoring. On the downside um, of, uh, of listing a prey as an ecosystem component species can be potential costs to fishery participants by capping potential revenue streams um, if management measures are put into place. Additionally, there's the cost to the council 
and the National Marine Fisheries Service by dedicating resources to adding ecosystem component species to an FMP, implementing regulations, and providing monitoring. So some of the admin administrative costs associated with this. Now we'll look at potential options for addressing ecosystem component species. As shown through past actions of the South Atlantic Council and other fishery management councils, there are several options that the South Atlantic Council may have if designated, designating bullet and frigate mackerel as ecosystem component species in the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan. Additionally, the seemingly somewhat flexible guidance in the National Standard Guidelines appears to also encourage novel ideas on the part of the council, provided that the ideas remain within the existing constraints, which we covered earlier. And so while not exhaustive, we'll go through a list of potential options that the South Atlantic Council has if they were to move forward with adding bullet and frigate mackerel to the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan um, as ecosystem component species. The council could request guidance from their scientific and statistical committee on identifying prey species to be listed as ecosystem component species and how this may relate back to bullet and frigate mackerel. Another option would be to designate ecosystem component species with no management related items such as trip limits or possession limits. This is similar to the actions taken to list some snapper grouper species as ecosystem component species in the snapper grouper FMP and it may elevate the importance of these species for research and monitoring purposes. The Council could prohibit directed fisheries for designated ecosystem component species by establishing a trip limit which can be based on a total amount or a percent of the total trip landings. This trip limit can apply across all gears or can focus on specific gears. The Council could also prohibit directed fisheries for designated ecosystem component species by establishing an annual vessel limit. The Council has the option to establish or focus reporting requirements towards ecosystem component species, such as through logbooks or dealer reports, or potentially establish permit requirements for landing ecosystem component species. Additionally, the Council could establish a mechanism or protocol for allowing the development of a directed fishery for species listed as ecosystem components. And finally, there are potentially other options. Under National Standard General Guidelines, management measures can be adopted in order to address other ecosystem issues. And so are there other ecosystem issues not listed that need to be addressed in the Dolphin Wahoo FMP? And are there management measures that can be created to address those different needs or issues? And now we'll switch gears to looking at the potential timing should the council decide to move forward with adding bullet mackerel and frigate mackerel to the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan. After the scoping webinars um, and public comment period in April, the council will be reviewing all public comments received at their June um, council meeting and deciding how to move forward or whether or not to move forward. If they do decide to move forward, the council would review an options paper at their September meeting um, a draft amendment at their following December meeting. Um, they would potentially be sending the amendment out for public hearings in March 2020. This would be followed by uh, public hearings in the spring of 2020 and then the council would receive these public hearing comments and potentially approve all actions and alternatives in the amendment at their June 2020 meeting. And then in September they would potentially take final action on the amendment and approve it for secretarial review with the amendment going into place after the final rule publishes in spring 2021. So as you can see here, we're still very early in the potential timeline should the council decide to move forward. The council wants to hear from you as far as what you think that they should do. So should the South Atlantic Council continue to consider adding bullet and frigate mackerel as ecosystem component species in the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan? And if so, what options should the Council consider when adding the two mackerel species to the FMP as ecosystem components? And finally, are there other issues not covered that the South Atlantic Council should consider in relation to potentially listing bullet mackerel and frigate mackerel as ecosystem component species? 
There will be several opportunities to provide your comments to the council. There will be two scoping webinars held where there will be this pre uh, presentation followed by a question and answer session. And then finally, an opportunity to provide verbal comments on the record for the council. These, uh, the two sessions will take place May 7th and May 9th, both starting at 6 p.m. Registration is required. Um, the two links there towards the middle of your screen can be used to register for the webinars. Um, and the scoping summary document, presentation, and video are available at the link in the middle of your screen. And the council will also be taking written comments uh, through their public online comment form available at the link at the bottom of the screen. The deadline for comments to be included in the comment overview that the council will be reviewing at their June 2019 meeting is May 16th, 2019 at 5 p.m. So that is the deadline. If there was something that was not covered or you happen to have more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. For questions regarding the topic that was just presented, as far as adding bullet and frigate mackerel to the Dolphin Wahoo Fishery Management Plan, contact me, John Hadley, um, at 843-302-8432 or john.hadley at safmc.net. For more general questions about the South Atlantic Council, contact Cameron Rhodes, our Fishery Outreach Specialist, or Kim Iverson, our Public Information Officer. That's all, and thank you for listening.